Alright then everybody, hello and welcome back to another episode of the Final Fantasy VI Blindfolded LLG. It's finally time to enter that final dungeon there. I'll just uh, shove everyone into the proper parties and then after that I'll mention why I'm putting people where. Alright, so basically... Mog has to be in Party 3, even though I'd want him in Party 1, because Party 1 is going to fight Doom. And I'd prefer Terra to be in Party 3, because they're going to be fighting Inferno, and she'd be able to dodge shrapnel, whereas Mog can't. And I'd prefer Mog in Party 1, because they're going to be fighting Azura, and Mog can tank uh, Demon Rage, whereas Terra can't. And sh you can't block it with Magic Evade, because it hits all the time. So... It's unfortunate that Party 3 is the only party that actually does any walking around in the areas with Great Behemoths when I don't have a, another party parked on a save point, which means that Mog pretty much has to be in this party, or the navigation becomes really, really awful. And Gogo is best in this party because I need the DPS for Inferno big time, so I need a Traveler character for sure. And Gogo's the one who can dodge a shrapnel, whereas Gao can't. Similarly to Mog versus Terra, but here I actually ha have the ability to make that choice the way I want to. So Gogo's gonna be in party three. I also want the DPS for uh, Atma and Goddess, so Gao's gonna be in party two. As much as I had, again, love to have a perfect defense character in party one, Gao's gotta be in party two as well. It's kind of forced, so. Azura's still not too bad, but it's not as easy as I'd like it to be. Meanwhile, I've also got a perfect M of 8 character in Party 2, and Setzer in Party 1 to be the closest thing to damage that they're going to have, because his, his fixed dice plus offering is pretty much the next best thing that I have at this point in terms of damage, so even though he's only level 6, so it's not that great, but it's still miles better than virtually anything else I've got access to, except maybe Phantom Rush. But, I definitely want Sabin in this party. Since there's enough for Azura, I want Sabin in this party to help with Inferno. Same with Shadow, who's the next best on the list, and not even really all that great. But, he can target, and that's helpful in the uh, Inferno fight, I guess, at some points, maybe. Edgar's in the Atma fight, because he can use the Debilitator, and that's marginally helpful. And the other three are pretty much just cannon fodder. I also another thing of note is that I taught Mog stop for the for reasons. So yeah, let's actually jump straight into this. I meant to put this thing on right. So the music will fade out when I can actually do stuff, and then I'll want to switch to party three because they're going to be the ones going first. I want to park them on a save point before either of the other parties is doing a thing. So press the Y button once. That's probably not the Y button, but whatever. So that switches to party two, and now I can switch to party three. So I take one step to the left, and now I can get on the conveyor belt. All right, so now down and left for a while. Our first steps into Kefka's tower. Inferno is probably going to be the worst boss in this entire dungeon, except for maybe the final boss. So, that one's coming up next, actually. Next, in, in, in fact, it'll probably be in this segment, because this is just going to be the first mini-segment. There's no way this would be a segment. So, Inferno and this might be able to make their own segment, I think. Given that Inferno's the only boss in here that doesn't suck. After that, I'll probably be chewing through everything uh, until I get everything before the three switch room then I'll probably make the jump to beating doom and then I'll probably stick the other two statues in one segment so yeah that's how I'll do it and I've been talking for way too long there we go red cap thing all right this uh, room in the next room I might as well think of them as one single room even though they're, they look completely different there's just this wall in the middle and I've got to walk around the wall, and there's two steps around the wall. So that's all I need to know to navigate there. 
the rest of this room is fairly easy to remember, so I don't need to worry. That's one chest, that's another chest, and neither of them are particularly useful, but, you know, whatever. I'm grabbing a whole bunch of stuff just in case, because this is all really easy to get. I'm not gonna bother with the Aegis Shield, though. <laughs> Even though that's ironically probably much more likely to be useful than either of these things. The Nutkin Suit is clearly outclassed by the Behemoth Suit for every single thing that I can think of, essentially. Except maybe the Nutkin Suit blocks poison, I don't know. One, two, all the way down. And, but the Age of Shield is a real pain to get, so who cares. It's probably not going to matter anyway. One, two, now I can walk out of this room. Let's just make absolutely sure that I walked out correctly. Yep, there's a door. Actually, that probably tells me almost nothing, because there's a door in the other room, too. But, details. Alright, so this part is surprisingly well laid out. I just need to go around in a big backwards C-shape. All the way down. And then all the way left. And all the way up. I should have stopped walking after I went into that door, but it's not a danger to walk up to the top here, it's just a waste of time. One, two, two is kind of the arc number for this segment, and it's actually two down from the top there, or two up from the entrance, so it doesn't really make a difference, I still have the same thing to remember. So if I go all the way left here, it's hard to tell when I enter the door, so I'm just going to keep going a little bit farther. And I go right and up for a bit until I hit the chest. There we go. So now I take a step left. One, two. And then... Uh, what was it? I couldn't just go all the way left, could I? I'll go left and up for a bit. Yeah, I probably messed that up. Okay, there we go, now I did it properly. I really just guessed my way through that, because I totally forgot what I was supposed to actually do there. Up and left. I didn't spend much time practicing this segment. It's similar to those town segments all in the most ironic of fashions, because this is the final dungeon and those are towns, but it's similar to those segments because I'm not particularly worried about this one, but the next one I am particularly worried about, because it'll be one of the harder segments in this dungeon. Perhaps the hardest segment left if it's not the final boss. Actually, I forgot. One more mini segment before Inferno. It's not going to be too complicated, but really my main goal here is just to get Shadow and Savin killed. If Gogo dies somehow, then bonus, but Mog better not die because then I'm just dead. So I'm just going to be pacing back and forth for a bit. And yes, I did remember to de-equip the Moogle Charm, partly because... I'm not going to be having that equipped for the next battle because that's totally useless for me. So yeah, it's probably Fortises and they're probably going to have to use Fireball on me and hopefully it'll kill Shadow and uh, Savin real quick. I should have done that trick that I did earlier where I uh, put both the characters uh, who wanted to survive on the controller one slot. but. I'll wait for one more fireball, or one more shielding, I guess, maybe even. Yeah, I'm just gonna go now and uh, check, because I can actually check fairly easily just by sitting on the save point.
Okay, good. Two escapees, that's exactly what I want. The point is, Shadow and Savin should be at low HP. As you can see, I've shifted around some of the stuff in my inventory. Gogo must have gotten hit by missile. Let's re-equip the red jacket and the ice shield. I don't want the flame shield equipped, even though that would absorb. In fact, because it would absorb. And re, re him to full HP, leaving him vulnerable to attacks. So that's pointless. Instead, I'd prefer the ice shield, which would just nullify the flame, the atomic ray, and not get me killed, but also not heal me up to also get me killed. And the red jacket serves the same purpose, so I can stack his magic evasion a little bit higher. I don't have another force shield yet, so... I gotta deal without that. I, th I think that would be either 10 or 20 more, which would be nice, but I'll have to go without it. And Gogo stacked for magic evasion as always. Mongus also stacked fairly obviously. So, as for relics, I've got a wall ring on Savin and Shadow, Shadoa, I guess, <laughs> in order to defend against most of his thunder attacks. He's still got one that can pierce my defenses, hopefully he doesn't use it. Gogo and uh, Mog are just set up to be as tanky as possible. Mog's got a little bit of extra magic evasion to help with shrapnel, even though he defends against everything else. My other option would be to defend against Delta Hit, but you know, it's, not, it's ultimately not terrible if Mog gets turned to stone because he's still taking hits. So. So that's not as bad as it could be. I'd prefer the extra magic block, to be honest, especially since uh, Shrapnel's fairly likely to hit him and Delta Hit's not quite as likely. So I'm all set up, hopefully, unless I need to change something stupid, but... Well, let's take another shot at this. Walk over to the boss. There we go. Alright, so first step, determine whoever comes up first. Okay, this is Shadow, so I'll whip a Thunderblade at the main part. Okay, who is this? It is Mog, that's good. I wanted Mog to come up first. This is seven. Hopefully that connects. It's not necessarily super important, but it's kind of handy. Okay, I'm back to mock again. So let's scroll up to my uh, shout here and fire that off. One, two, three, four, five, six. This puts me in grave danger because now he can use Meteor on any turn. But he'll throw away the first turn using a uh, tech barrier, so I'm hoping to get have the time to throw in some hits myself. Nice, step mine, and I know that connected. This is Shadow, right? Yeah, so throw the second Thunderblade. There's my uh, tech barrier that I was expecting. Monk doesn't have a lot to do, so I'll just wait around for Gogo's next turn. And try to guess what it is, so that I can- yes! Okay, I've got two now. He's on the edge of death, I'm sure. So Phoenix down, Remedy, something, something. You know, those items aren't going to be much use if I don't know which one's which. <laughs> Thunderblade, Heal Rod, Pearl Ta Ninja Star, Pearl Rod. Heal Rod, please throw at the boss and not yourself, because that would be a lot more useful, just saying. Okay, so hopefully. Hopefully he doesn't hit me with Meteor, and hopefully I can. Just finish him off very quickly. Okay, that's it. He's done. He has 30,000 HP. The other members of the group do have a chance to contribute, but if Gogo just does that, 
It's kind of pointless, because <laughs> he could have done it all by himself there for sure, but who cares? I don't need that pearl rod. It's it's not useful at all for me. No battle on the way back to a save point, please. That went pretty much flawlessly. That's ex exactly the sort of thing I was hoping for when I blew away the arms at the start. I mean, there are ways to make myself completely invincible in that battle, but they just take forever because... I can't defend myself against Meteor very well, which means I can't use any randomly targeting attacks. And, uh, just saying, but in an LLG there's not many other options. All the moves that aren't randomly targeting generally just suck. So, uh, I guess that's the end of that. See you next time. Wow, four minutes.